Okay, and we are live. Susan Hogan. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go into the slide now. Okay, I think I'll just kick off because I, I mean, the, this is going to be recorded and shared out to everybody. So, um, you know, if you do miss the start of it, it's it's not a big problem. Um, the reason we started these Nash talks um, with Harvey Nash is just due to everything that's going on at the moment. Um, just to give people a little bit extra support at home um, to any of our clients and this would be sent out to some of our, our contractors as well. Um, uh, it'll only be a, a, a bite size of what I can provide really with nutrition advice. It's for 15-20 minutes, I'll try and get through all of these slides in that time. And really what I want you to get from this is just something that you can use in your everyday and some improvements that will have some positive effects on hopefully your nutrition, your diet, your you know digestive health in general. So I'll kick off. So just a little bit about me. Um, so I qualified three years ago um, with a diploma in nutritional therapy. Um, that is, I'm also a member of the NTOI, which is the Nutritional Therapist of Ireland. And the reason why that's such a good body to be involved in is that we study biomedicine for three years as well as nutrition and we also do clinical practice so i've done about 400 hours of clinical practice so you're in safe enough hands in the information i'm about to provide everything that i have provided um, is fact-based um, nutrition backed up with scientific evidence and studies that have been done previously so this is not and i just want to make people very aware you know the information you're ingesting through social media um, and from people who are not qualified to give you um, recommendations on your nutrition and your diet, just be very wary of it and you know, look to the background of it and where it's coming from and what's right for you. Nutrition is a very specific thing to look at with somebody and you know, it's specific to the person, it's also specific to the environment they live in and it's specific to their budget and it's specific to their current, I suppose, biosis that they have going on. So, Firstly, we'll talk about what is the immune system. So the immune system is commonly caused by stress, low immune system, um, lack of exercise, poor gut health, poor gut health, um, nutritional deficiencies. So what you eat makes a difference and the strength of your immune system will be affected by that. So the major parts, I suppose, that what you need to know about it is, is there are two major goals for immune cells. Um, addressing issues inside the cell and addressing issues outside of the cell. So they, they're more like the pathogens that are coming into the body. So they're, the immune system works to neutralize and remove those pathogens like bacteria, viruses, par parasites, fungi, and substances that are coming in from your environment. So these all fight against the body's own cells and that is where we get our challenges um, with illness. So when your body is has its natural defenses, I suppose that's when it's at its best and can defend you against all of this. So common factors that do come into play here, um, stress and diet are the two main factors. So they're the ones that you really need to, I suppose, focus on. And I know we're all living in a time that stress is, is almost completely avoidable, unavoidable. Um, but the other factors are psychological and neurological factors, environmental, hormone imbalances and nutrition. All of these come into play when you're talking about immune impact. And what we're gonna concentrate on today is nutrition. Um, you know, there's, I can tell you there's 163 pages of what I've had to condense into this 15 minutes. So the, the focus is on nutrition, of course. So this is just a little graph to show you. Um, I'm not gonna to go too much into detail here, but this is the immune system in a very high level version. So there's the innate side of it and there's the adaptive side of it. So the innate side of it is um, that's what we're born with, that's what we um, are trying to support here. And the adaptive side is the second line of defense, which actually protects from re-exposure, so things that are coming back in. So this all comes into play with kind of memory within ourselves and understanding things that we need to get out of the system and reject. So one of the main things is these things called natural killer cells. So part of, they're part of the innate um, immune system and really important to, I suppose, defend everything. They're, they're first line of defense against many viruses. 
they make up about five to 10% of the lymphocytes in the blood. So they are the ones that like flying around, stopping anything that's coming in from infecting and protecting all of those cells that we need. Two things that I'm, I'm gonna mention in this is resveratrol and garlic. These are hugely supportive of the natural killer cells and they, I suppose they regenerate them quite quickly. So resveratrol, um, so that's, that's a, a thing called a polyphenol, um, which is known to reduce um, inflammation. So it's an anti-inflammatory type thing. So you can get it from red wine, um, but not in high quantities. Um, so therefore grapes are, are a really good form of um, resveratrol. There's also seeds, and the skins of like potatoes and skins on other um, fruits are really good um, um, ways of accessing resveratrol in your diet. Also garlic, um, garlic is one of the main supporters of natural killer cells. So it's, it's really very, there are two sides of the natural killer cells. There's the, the underactive side of it and not having enough. And then there's the overactive side of natural killer cells, which has another effect on, on people, which really it's, it's, it's not something that we'll come into in, in immunity today. So I'm fully aware of some of these slides, the, the writing is quite small, but I'll put this all into a PDF and send it out to everyone afterwards. So what can we do to support it? So I've given a list of the, the foods, such as the fruits, the vegetables, the nuts, the seeds, the proteins that you need, the fats and the oils. These are all really important to incorporate into the diet, but and so the, the focus and the best approach really is around your lifestyle due, due to stress management and exercise that you need to incorporate, the diet itself, which I'll talk through some recipes now, and then also supplementation. So um, you know, supplementation really should come into place only when you feel like you're not getting the right um, vitamins, minerals from your, your diet, the way you're, you're managing it. But it's, it's, it's something that... I personally find it really useful, um, especially you know with busy people at work and if you have kids, it, it isn't always you know easy to be mindful about what you're putting into your body, you know what greens are going in and everything else. So the supplementation I do support. So I've, I've listed a few recipes here. Some of them would be quite easy. Um, I'm, I'm hoping these are all quite straightforward for people. Um, and what we're focusing on here really is, I suppose these the types of vegetables that are yellow, orange, and red, they're the immune support vegetables. So I'm trying to get in some, some recipes here with that. So this one, you can see it's got the carrots in there. It's got the yellow onion. Um, it has some turmeric in it, which is anti-inflammatory. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later again. And the garlic is in there again. Again, the natural killer cells love the garlic. And ginger, big, big advocate of ginger. The five a day couscous is again carrots in there, getting in the orange, the yellows. Um, you can replace the couscous with quinoa if you're feeling a little bit more um, adventurous with the grain. And there's also whole grain rice if you want to put that in there. And then the slow cooker barley and chickpea risotto. I put this one in because barley is a really, um, really nutritious food to get into your diet. It's really good for the kidneys. Um, it's really supportive for the immune system because what it does is it, it, it's a really good diuretic and gets um, the toxins out of your body. Um, this recipe is a really nice one because it is really straightforward. It's, it's quite easy to do and it's got a lot of the nutrients in there that you need for um, a healthy immune system. So I'm going into a couple of drinks here now and purely because um, this is um, they're the easier ones to do if you didn't want to have to do a full cooking, you know, and you're still going to eat your pizza, which is fine as well. You can still add these things in and it means that you essentially, you know, adding in the right thing. So this is immune boosting turmeric tea. So there's two variations of this. Um, there's the turmeric and adding in all of these spices. If you don't have everything, it's absolutely fine not to do that. Um, but what this is doing is it's using lemon juice that alkalizes the body the turmeric which is an anti-inflammatory which is really good if you have any congestion or any respiratory problems as well and um, turmeric is, is known to be um, and there's studies done that show that it is as good an anti-inflammatory as ibuprofen in cases where it's not chronic and um, so if it's just these kind of one-off cases of colds or anything turmeric is a really good um, uh, solution for that 
the other option with this one and what I do in the evenings is if you use a milk now I, I don't drink cow's milk but some people would and it's fine um but I use like a nut milk with the turmeric and the honey and I mix it in it's almost like a, it's a warm drink in the evenings which is really soothing this is one that I have every single morning um, or most mornings um, so this is a really easy one. It's it's very tasty and it's really easy for like for kids if you want. To, I I would refer to this as kind of like a chocolate milkshake, but I'm pretty sure there's others who would um, not agree. But this is a non dairy milk, or you, you know if you're not into the non dairies, it's fine to use milk, banana, cacao powder, and then there's the maca powder, which is not essential. That's just something I always have. Um, a good quality honey and some mill seeds. So again, this is getting in all of those things like the resveratrol and um, the cacao powder actually is a really good investment to make it for, I'm a vegetarian, so I often don't get a lot of the vitamins I need um, in a normal vegetarian diet. So this provides a lot of the vitamins for me. Um, it has, it's 40 times better than blueberries um, and it's antioxidant. Um, it's got more calcium in it than cow's milk um, and it's also a really good source of iron so again all really good stuff to get in there especially first thing in the morning and this is another nice one this is a thyme tea so um, this is given to me a friend by a friend of mine which is a great um, great addition to this and basically thyme is an antiseptic it's an antiviral and it's an antibiotic herb and um, you can make a batch of this and it keeps for a week and if you drink this every morning um, it's really good for soothing coughs and you know as we see there water is the best expectorant but thyme tea and um, kills viruses um, we're not we're not supposing it kills covid we're just saying it kills viruses and it's very good for the immune system um, this is the cold blaster tea so again another antiviral and um, this one um is really important because of the ginger and the ginger i suppose is you know it's relying the ginger's ability to boost your immune system and it's believed ginger helps to break down the accumulation of toxins in the body so it's it's really helpful at times where you're having you know a suppressed immune system so it's it's anti-inflammatory again and good for against viruses so this is the garlic the ginger the, the chili pepper a really good one as well and you can make a batch of this and drink it over a couple of days it's just heated up so what to ditch the things we don't want to do um sugar so the thing about it says excess sugar wreaks havoc on your immune system faster than almost anything else and um, i know it's really hard nowadays we're all sitting at home and the snacking is is kind of it has increased but really avoiding this is going to be important or at least cutting down as much as you can. Um, dehydration is another one. I mean, everybody knows, I mean, if you're not drinking enough water, we're not flushing out the toxins. Um, I, I will have apps if people want recommendations afterwards about how to calculate what you should be drinking every day. Um, the sitting down, um, I mean, it's, I think the importance around this is that you know, not necessarily going out to do a 5k run that people seem to have taken up everywhere, but get up in the morning, do a bit of a stretch before you sit down at your computer or whatever you're starting your day with. Do something in the in after lunchtime, get out to do a bit of a stretch. And also in the evening, you know, before you sit down, settle down for the evening, just do, you know, 10 minute stretches, little walk around the garden if you have that choice. And um, the sitting down piece is, you know, there's studies that have been conducted about um, the negativity, the negative impact it causes on the immune system, especially in your later years in life from, from you know, there's a study that was conducted in 2012 and it has shown the impact over people who are non-active versus the active people. So from the age of 50 onwards, it's, um, and there are studies to show that it's, it has massive negative impacts. Alcohol overuse, again, this is, um, I know, there's been a tendency to veer towards this in the time the last few weeks of people being at home and um you know not being able to see friends and socialize but alcohol overuse will have um this huge negative impact on the gut health and the gut health is directly impactful on the immune response there's there's a a correlation there between both and um, so the the decreasing immune function will be evident very quickly with alcohol overuse because what it does is it slows down the other processes 
in the body, which means that the cell de regeneration doesn't happen and alcohol will actually block that from happening and your natural killer cells will be affected again. Dairy is something that I would say, this is not about cutting things out entirely. This is about being a bit more mindful in moderation of what you have. So dairy um, can negatively affect um, the mucosal layers of the body. So in your mouth, your nose, your eyes. And if you're eating too much dairy, ingesting too much dairy, the sinus area <clears throat> and the respiratory area can get quite affected. Um, so that's another thing to just reduce or be mindful of you know, how much dairy you're actually taking in. And then the other thing is processed foods. I think everybody knows that you know, the, the fresher, the better, move away from the processed foods. They're just not gonna, um, they're not helping anything really, basically. And I have a list of processed foods if anybody wants them, but basically we're talking about the fried foods, baked foods, the white bread, the pasta, um, salami, things like that, bacon, all the nice things. So moving on just to supplements, um, <coughs> excuse me, I have a list here. There's probably about 20 different things that I could mention right now, but this is a list, I think, of the top ones that I would recommend. So Echinacea is a good one. Um, it's, it is immune boosting herb, um, so it's a nutritional herb. And the only thing about um, Echinacea that I will say is anybody who's on corticosteroids or any kind of steroid um, um, medication, Echinacea is not for you, and, and that would be something that if, if you are on any of those things and you want to speak to me afterwards, I can recommend some, some other things, but Echinacea is not for everybody. Um, vitamin D3 is probably the most important one you can possibly take right now. So if you were to pick one from this list, it would be vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 helps with, um, <clears throat> with calcium absorption as well, and it's also is, you know, it's a hormone that's in our body that's actually really, really relevant to a lot of the systems that are working to keep them working properly. Zinc, again, this is something that needs to be taken daily. It cannot be produced in the body and it needs to be ingested. Um, this, again, is hugely important, but in conjunction with vitamin C is what we would take zinc. Without vitamin C, zinc is harder to absorb, but you can take your vitamin C through just eating you know, a fresh orange every day. That's perfectly fine. The reason I'm saying the jury is out on vitamin C is purely because um, it's, there's a lot of studies been done around it, whether or not it has like real impact on colds and flus. Um, you know, there's no harm in taking it, but at the same time, um, I think vitamin D and the zinc would be more important here. The fish oils, um, so the vitamin E, um, again, is there, the vitamin E is actually, um, is more to do with the cellular, cellular part of the body. So it's about keeping the cells and the, it's called the epithelium part of the cell, keeping it all, um, I suppose, healthy. Um, so with the fish oils, what it's doing is, that's why they're good for your brain, because they're keeping the cell function and cell structure um, protected. So fish oils, brain, respiratory, anti-inflammatory, really good. And then I put in this one just because oregano, um, I, I did do a lot of study around essential oils. And oregano oil is, a really powerful anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial, anti-everything bad um, kind of essential oil to take. Um, but only good quality oregano or oregano. And if it's an essential oil, it can it should be ingested. Um, but again, that needs to be taken very carefully. But really powerful. Now, coming near the end, um, so some of the extras I just wanted to point out are the eight hours restful sleep. So people seem to overlook this. Keeping a regular kind of pattern is, is so hugely important. These eight hours of restful sleep, um, that regeneration again of for giving your, your cells time to regenerate over, overnight, um, that is what makes for that immune system health and you know, getting up the next morning and, and feeling that level of, of rest. And um, I know people struggle with that, and maybe that's something else we can talk about in a later series, but 
um, just be really conscious of that. Epsom bath salts, um, they, you can, if you don't have a bath, you can easily just put them into um, a basin. They absorb magnesium into the body, which again, brings down inflammation, but it's also a relaxant. Um, and it's a hugely important for a lot of the, the functions that happen within the body and keeping everything going. Mindfulness and meditation, I think, you know, nobody needs to take up everything all at once, but the one thing I'll say about mindfulness is that you can practice that everywhere and anywhere. I know with meditation, it takes a little bit more um, of a commitment, but with mindfulness, um, you know, they do online courses or, you know, there's TED Talks and everything on this. It's, it's hugely impactful. It, um, you know, about just bringing yourself back into the present and, and trying not to, to kind of run away with yourself with everything that's going on at the minute. And then again, I mentioned exercise and stretches. So the stretch has been really important. It takes 10 minutes, five minutes, just to do something to keep the blood flowing and and you know you know, guarantee to feel better after it so if you take away nothing from this this is what you take away um, this is basically in short if you focus on eating yellow orange and red foods they are generally you know non-processed of course the fresh yellow orange and red foods garlic for your natural killer cells you know to boost those to support them Ginger, for all of the reasons I mentioned earlier, it's an anti-inflammatory and again brings a lot of support to the immune system. Turmeric, because of its an anti-inflammatory effects as well. Um, vitamin D, which I've just been speaking about, and zinc, and then the non-processed foods. So I suppose everything there is really what you need to try and add into it. It was quite hard to condense this all down into such a short period of time, but I hope you're able to get something from it. Um, any references and recommended reading material I can add in and speak to anybody about separately um, once I share all of the slides. But that's it basically. So any questions from anybody? Is there anything anybody wants to come in with? I'm not sure if we can hear anybody or if they can put their hand up if you want to ask any questions about it. I hope I didn't fly through that too quickly. Oh, here we go. Yes, it's, um, sorry, I just got a, a, um, a message just from um, a lady here. And just, yes, you can share out the presentation, absolutely. I'll put it into a PDF format, which will make it a lot easier to read. Um, I, it's fairly self-explanatory, so I don't think I'll have to give you too much content to explain it. Um, it's just really about making those small little changes that are um, applicable to everybody. It's, see, because this is quite general, um, it's, it's kind of harder for me to give it to everybody because it, it needs to be quite specific for, for all involved. So absolutely, yes, you can share it. I'll make sure that I send it out. Anybody else, any questions? Okay, so just one more thing before I go. Um, and that, oh, snack ideas. Okay, so somebody came up with a question around snack ideas. Um, so really quickly, um, I know we're all snacking on crisps and chocolate and everything else, and that's all fine and do what you need to do to, to make yourself feel a bit better. But I think with snack ideas, there's, I can put in some recipes actually to the PDF once I send that around. Um, but your usual, like the, the carrot sticks, the snacking on, try and go for the nuts and the seeds. They're the ones with all the resveratrol along with your glass of red wine and um, things like that. But um, what I'll do is I'll put in some extra snack idea recipes. So for like kind of protein balls, but really simple ones, not ones with like the, you know, the crazy kind of ingredients that nobody has in their house. So I'll send that on. Anybody else? No. Nope. Okay, what I'm going to just share with you now is, so what we have, um, we have going on for the next few sessions are, I'll just get to this presentation here, sorry. Um, the next sessions we're holding, this is the, the series of NASH Talks. So the next one we have next week is a physio for adapting your home workstation. So 
this will be a really interesting one, which I was just talking about with the stretches. Um, it'll, be, it'll be 15 minutes just talking through what we can do at our workstations, then tools to address mental health at home. Really interesting one from this clinical psychologist and founder of My Mind, and then homeschooling beyond the homework. So um, Judy is going to do some offer some home advice on um, schooling children and engaging ideas. So thanks everybody for joining. Um, I will send around the PDF and if you have any questions specific to yourself, we will um, I'll follow up direct, directly with you. And also we did mention that I would give a one-to-one -one consultation to somebody. So the competition is that if you can take a photo of one of the recipes, whether it's one of the drinks or the food and send it in to us, and then I'll pick a winner out of that and you'll get a free one-to-one -one consultation online, of course. Um, with me over the next month or two. Okay. I think we're done. Cool. Thanks, Susan. Thanks.